I'm Paul Messina in Greenwich Village, where you'll find the Strand Bookstore still going strong, and you'll also find the second and third generations of the Bass family, co-owners Fred Bass and his daughter Nancy. They say they're the largest used bookstore in the world, and you can find what you need either in a 48-cent book on the outside racks, or in this second printing of Shakespeare's Folio from 1632. My dad, Benjamin Bass, opened the store in 1927. And it was a small bookstore, and I think he ran it all by himself. Don't want any million. I'm getting my share. I'm only got one. Well, when he was a young man and came to New York at age 17, had a job working on 4th Avenue, and at that time there were many bookstores there. And he hung around the bookstores, and he got infected with the idea of running a bookstore himself. At least at the beginning, until he could afford to have a clerk working there. And at that time, I think he was about 26 years old. Pretty young to, to start a store and a business. A 4th Avenue, which was considered Book Row of America, there were 48 bookstores there, mostly used bookstores. Some of them very small, some of them quite big, and none of them as large as the Strand today. And customers went from store to store. And uh, in those days, if you were looking for a book, you had to go from store to store to ask. The biggest one employed 17 people. That was Schulte's, which no longer exists. In fact, none of them exist. They've all disappeared now. I just remember so many bad things. When we moved off Fifth, Fourth Avenue, a number of the booksellers wouldn't tell our customers where we went. When they said, what happened to Strand? Well, they said, oh, we don't know. And I was just down the block from them. So, I mean, we just... Uh... <laughs> In reality, the Strand right now has more books than the entire 4th Avenue at 48 bookstores. We employ more people than they did. And their demise was uh, of the 48 booksellers, only two sons went into the business. Uh, and that's because they didn't train or do anything. Or, uh, they kept all their knowledge to themselves. When Nancy came into the business, before she came into the business, so she'd worked here part-time, I advised that she go work for some other company to get more experience, which she did. And essentially that's what my dad wanted me to do too. But, uh, I ended up just directly coming in and working, working for the store. And I'd take the subway down and be here at 4, and I'd work with them until 6.30. And that I really worked, you know, pretty full time, from 1 till closing. It was closing was 7 o'clock or when the last customers left. So he had this, this thing of trying to buy everything he could. So actually, I'm doing the same thing he did. He was working right on the main floor till the very end. At first, I used to think he was crazy. Why, why are we buying extra books? We haven't sold all these, but we just kept buying and buying. And it was the fact you can't sell a book you don't have. So you've got to have the book in stock. And I run it more efficiently than he ran it. And Nancy now runs it a lot more efficiently than I ran it. So let's put it, you know, there are levels of efficiency. He was all over the map and he just was interested in the books, that's all. I had more of an idea of display and getting them organized and having customers come in and having taken care of them. And she's just expanded on that greatly. I mean, my dream was to get a big bookstore, which I've, I've achieved. I mean, I'm very happy about that. I really want to get a big, huge bookstore. We moved off Fourth Avenue, a pretty dead avenue. Even now, if you go over there, the traffic flow on Fourth Avenue is minor compared to Broadway. So location was part of it. But I think the real reason we made it over here is once we got a little better space and bigger space and started selling more books and we were able to acquire more books when I was able to buy the building and then expand the store. And as we expanded, we got more and more books. We got good stock. So that's why we were successful. We've got the books. We'll have people come in and they look at the fine bindings and they look here and they look here and oh great, you know, and they start browsing, but they walk out with a couple of paperbacks, new books. And, well fine, you know, but they, they feel they're dealing with a legitimate bookstore. And it's only in the past five years or six years that we've gone into heavily into new books. And very, very selectively we just buy 
we'd buy new copies of it and sell them. So uh, that's working out very well for us. And now our customers can come in here and ask for a book, and uh, if there's a good chance we'll have it. And it takes a lot of work to do this. That's what it is. No. I'm happy I'm in the book business and everything else. Uh, but for most of my life, I work six days a week, literally 10 hour days. It's been an exciting adventure for me because every day I'm on a treasure hunt. That's the thing. I've been accused of being obsessed by the book business, but that's what I am.